Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the Understanding Fatigue Causes and Solutions webinar. My name is Christina Schaefer. I'm a wife, a mom of a high energy five year old, um, and I'm also the director of social media for one of the largest associations in the country. Um, but I'm also an arthritis patient. I've been living with rheumatoid arthritis for a little over 17 years. Um, I'm lucky to have my physical RA symptoms under control, but fatigue is definitely a place that I struggle. I know like many of you who are joining tonight, our guest expert this evening will help us understand more about arthritis related fatigue and the various solutions that can help with energy and function. But before we begin, let's watch a short video about the insights program so you can understand how to make your voice heard and help the foundation create more programs like this one. By taking part in the Live Yes Insights Assessment, you help change lives today, including your own, and you help change the future of arthritis. It takes just 10 minutes or less to share your experience and make a difference. Answer simple questions, like how often you felt arthritis pain in the last week, Ongoing insights data from people like you will lead to new resources that ease daily life. Your insights show what kind of support you need in your community. You improve the healthcare system. You focus researchers and others on top priorities. You'll make more research funding possible, leading to new groundbreaking treatments. The power is in your hands to change things now and for the future. This is your opportunity to change the future of arthritis. Just a note, oh, <laughs> just a note, the foundation has recently launched its JA Insights program. So if you're a parent of a child with JA, we strongly encourage you to enroll in that program as well. Um, and also, if you've already taken your insights in the past, but it's been a while, remember you can take the insights more than once. We may feel one way today, but six, now, six months from now feel completely different. So remember that you can take those insights more than once. A few housekeeping notes for tonight's event. We have muted all attendees for this event, but you can direct any questions you may have throughout the presentation in the Q&A box on the bottom of your screen. We will reserve time to answer any of your questions at the end of the presentation. Um, also, after tonight's session, you will receive an email about your experience. These surveys help us track the success of sessions like this and better plan for future events. So please take time to fill out that survey. And let's get started with the main event. Dr. Wilson is a chief of rheumatology at the Piedmont Hospital and president of Piedmont Rheumatology Consultants a multidisciplinary arthritis center. Dr. Wilson has practiced rheumatology for three decades. He has served as the chairperson for the Arthritis Foundation Medical and Scientific Committee and is on the advisory board for the Lupus Foundation of America. Dr. Wilson, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Christina. And that was a very nice uh, introduction. I sure do appreciate it. This is perhaps one of the most important topics, or at least so my, my patients would tell me. Um, you, you know, a lot of patients will say, I can soldier through the pain, but it is, uh, it, the, the, the fatigue is what really gets me down. So um, maybe we'll just move to the next slide and, uh, and, and look at the goals for our meeting. So participants who attend this program will, will discuss common causes, risk factors, and symptoms that are related to fatigue and arthritis, uh, their treatments and self-management strategies that can help with the fatigue and can help improve energy and thereby improve quality of life, and how to discuss arthritis-related fatigue with your healthcare provider uh, when, uh, and when a specialist should be considered. On our next slide, uh, we, we, we uh, ask the question, what is fatigue? Um, and how do we differentiate that from sleepiness? Well, I guess we can all figure out what sleepiness is. And sleepiness is when you have a tendency to fall asleep. So um, 
there was a, uh, a character in the Pickwick Papers, uh, Joe of Wardle, uh, who uh, fell asleep while knocking on a door. And, um, and he was, as, as they say, short for his weight. Uh, so when somebody falls asleep like that, sometimes they call them Pickwickian. So, uh, but you can also have narcolepsy uh, during the day of uh, falling asleep or so, so sleepiness is when you feel sleepy and you fall asleep and you feel better after your nap. So people who are sleepy are temporarily, temporarily aroused with fatigue from, from uh, activity. So in other words, you, you know, if you're, if you're in a car and you're getting kind of drowsy while you're driving, you, you get over, you have a cup of coffee, you move around, do a little bit of exercise and you wake back up. Fatigue actually is, is the opposite. So when you're fatigued, it's, it gets worse with activity. So fatigue is, um, is you know, when you are, you've been, you've been working and, and you just can't push through it. And there's, with fatigue, sometimes there's mental exhaustion, uh, poor muscle endurance, delayed recovery, and, um, and non-restorative sleep. So one of the things that we tell people or, or explain to people, a, a way to explain it, would be to say that um, with, uh, you know, when, you're, when you are on a, a ski slope and you decide to go up that, that one last time up the hill, um, that's, that's when you get hurt. And, um, you know, of course, once you get hurt, nobody skis anymore anyway. But, um, but the reason why you get hurt uh, later in the day is because your muscles are fatigued and they're, they're weaker. You, you have, uh, you're, you're a bit exhausted and uh, maybe even have, make some, some mental errors. And, um, and that's when you get hurt while you're skiing. And the, and the same is true during the day when you have arthritis and you have fatigue, that it's far better to uh, take a rest. So uh, my father, who started the, the division of Rheumatology at Emory University in 1966, used to say, you should, you should rest before you get fatigued. So um, some people with uh, significant arthritis, he would recommend uh, that they get up in the morning, uh, they do their morning chores, whatever that may be, and then they um, lie down for uh, a, uh, uh, you know, maybe 30 to 45 minutes before lunch. They get up, they eat lunch, um, they work into the afternoon, and then lie down for 30 or 45 minutes uh, before they eat supper. Uh, eat supper, do what they need to do in the evening. Um, and then uh, in order to get good rest, uh, that they, you know, they, they, they have a rest period um, and get prepared, uh, prepared for sleep. So they have good, good restorative uh, sleep because without good restorative sleep, pain gets worse and you have, um, uh, you, you have more fatigue. So on our next slide, uh, we have a, a scoring system, and um, and these this is a, a questionnaire that anybody could take. Um, and um, if you uh, if you if you work, you know, twelve hours a day, then some of these things might be rather natural to you. That how likely are you to doze off or fall asleep um, in certain situations? Uh, I know my patients become really quite irritated if I doze off while I'm talking to them, so I try not to have that happen. But sitting or reading, uh, certainly, I, I know that uh, it, it, it's not hard for me to do that. Watching television, I'm not sure that I've ever been to a, a movie or, or, or sat through a, a movie uh, watching TV that my brother-in-law doesn't fall asleep. But he, he gets up very early in the morning and works very hard. Um, so uh, other places, a theater, I've already mentioned that. As a passenger in a car, I'm, I'm not sure that I've ever been on a long trip that my wife didn't sleep. Um, which uh, is a little bit problematic sometimes. And, and I will mention that there's a, 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 a medication that I, on, on, on two occasions in my, uh, in my history of, of uh, driving, driving my family to vacation, I've, I've used it. It's called Modafinil or Provigil um, because uh, everybody was sleeping in the car. And I, I thought that was a good idea, but not while I was driving. So um, sitting, uh, sitting, talking to someone, I, I, I remember one time uh, I was on a date and it was after exams and uh, um, I was at dinner with a young lady who uh, actually, not surprisingly, I only had one dinner uh, uh, date with her because I, uh, I, I dozed in the middle of dinner because I was falling asleep. So if you're sitting and talking to somebody and you fall asleep, then you're, you're, you're either um, uh, Pickwickian 
or uh, or it's just after exams uh, or sitting quietly after lunch without alcohol. So so alcohol, you know, of course, makes a difference. So fatigue, on the other hand, if you uh, if you exercise and it brings on fatigue and, you, you know, certainly it, it, that's part of the intensity of exercise. So um, I, I have a, a colleague who's an orthopedist who uh, would uh, exercise to the point that it was hard for him to walk up the steps after after he finishes exercising. Um, and so so there are varying, uh, you know, varying levels of fatigue and how you induce fatigue. But if you're just doing normal chores or your normal daily activity and you and you get fatigued, then that obviously is not normal. Um, and then, uh, you know, whether you feel weak uh, and, and lack energy. So um, and I, I'll note that there is a, a down at the bottom of this is a uh, an overview for a American family physician um, journal, which I actually am one of the editor uh, editors for for the uh, for arthritis. Um, but it, it's a good article and you can find it on the Internet if you want to read more about this. On our next slide. You, uh, there are some distinctions here for causes of fatigue. So uh, chronic fatigue is uh, fatigue that has lasted uh, for six months, uh, has disease activity uh, and can be related to uh, disease activity or in, in inflammatory arthritis. And certainly that is a component of many of our patients with inflammatory arthritis. Uh, secondary uh, fatigue can come along with some of the medications we use, certainly um, the, the word uh, uh, narcosis, I, I love to scuba dive, and narcosis uh, means uh, sleepy. So um, if you are diving uh, deep, uh, the rapture of the deep is um, you, 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 you don't think as clearly um, and you are sleepy and it's a bad thing if there's um, you know, 150 feet of water above you. Um, but other medications, uh, antidepressants sometimes can make you uh, sleepy, uh, hormonal imbalances, uh, hypothyroidism um, can uh, contribute to it, or other undiagnosed comorbidities. So I had a patient one time who um, I was treating for rheumatoid arthritis, and I thought I'd done a, a pretty good job. Um, as a matter of fact, her lab work looked good, um, but she was still you know, complaining of pain, and I was giving a lecture somewhere. And my wife, uh, she wound up seeing my wife, who is also a rheumatologist. So let's be clear on that. Um, we've practiced together for 30 years now. So she, uh, um, she saw my wife and my wife did a tender point examination and said, uh, you know, you've got fibromyalgia. And uh, the next time I, I, I saw this, uh, this patient, she said, you know, your wife's a genius. And uh, I completely agree with her. But um, so there may be co comorbidities as well. Sleep disorders, um, uh, you know, certainly, as I mentioned, if you don't get good restorative sleep, the next day, not only do you hurt more, you have more fatigue, you're tireder. And um, so th those all go together. And then physiologic fatigue. So um, what I've already mentioned, um, if, if, if you don't sleep, you're going to be tired, you're going to be fatigued, it's going to be hard to get around. Um, inactivity, though, actually contributes to it and a poor diet contributes to it. So um, the things that we uh, oftentimes mention to our patients is, it, it, you know, that if, you, if, you've got, if you've got fatigue, you need, to, you need to move around to get some exercise. And they usually look at us and say, you know, Dr. Wilson, you're, you're not listening to me. I just told you that I have fatigue and it's hard for me to get around. And I say it is, it is somewhat uh, counterintuitive. However, it does help to get um, to get exercise. And so one of the best exercises, and, and um, it's a program with uh, the Arthritis Foundation, which is Walk for Ease. And it's recommended that you walk 30 minutes a day, uh, five or six days a week. And um, exercise, the exercise we like the best for your joints is uh, water exercise, because if you get in waist high water, it takes 50% of the weight off your knees chest high water, it takes 90% of the weight off your knees. And if you get in water over your head, it takes all the weight off of your knees. So, um, so water is what we like the best, but it has the most excuses for aquatic therapy. So, um, so the, the, the most popular is walking because all you need is a pair of shoes. And we usually say walk by time, not by distance. So you don't get shipwrecked. So people say, you know, I, I went to walk two miles and I got halfway through and I had to call somebody to come pick me up. 
and there's nothing magical about miles. It's the imperial system, and even even the even the empire that we uh, that we came from doesn't use it anymore. They use the metric system, but um, but walk by time. And so, if you're going to walk for 30 minutes, walk 15 minutes out and 15 minutes back. And uh, in diving, if uh, if there's a current, you 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 swim into the current. And, uh, and you come back and let the current help you come back. And the same would be with walking. If there's a hill, walk up the hill going and, and walk down the hill coming back. So, um, so activity is important. Diet is important. Certainly, uh, you know, a, a, a good diet that has healthy vegetables, uh, balanced diet is, uh, is very important. Um, the, the standard American diet, uh, which the, of course the, the acronym for that is SAD, um, is is not the greatest diet. So um, there's a there's a physician named Joel Furman who wrote a couple of books. He's written several books. One is Eat to Live and Eat for Health. And basically, if it's if it is green and uh, leafy, eat it. And if it's a yellow or beige, like anything at McDonald's, most everything at McDonald's, don't don't eat it. So on our next slide. Um, there are other things that can uh, contribute to uh, chronic fatigue, infections. You could have a chronic infection uh, or allergies certainly can cause people to be uh, fatigued. And, and there's some people who are, uh, I have patients who are allergic to um, their environment. Uh, and, you know, there's something in their house that they're allergic to and it makes them hurt and makes them fatigued. And sometimes, you know, they go to see an environmental doctor and the, or an allergist. Uh, they can be very helpful. Um, or you could have a, you know, a chronic infection uh, that uh, would contribute to your fatigue. And then you would see a, uh, a, an infectious disease spe a specialist. So inflammatory types of arthritis, um, you know, the most common type, of course, or, or our flagship, perhaps we would say would be rheumatoid arthritis. But we also know that ankylosing spondylitis and psoriatic arthritis, uh, it, it, arthritis associated, uh, associated with inflammatory bowel disease are all uh, contributors or can be contributors to fatigue, certainly if there's uncontrolled in, uh, inflammation. And then there are non-inflammatory conditions. I've already mentioned fibromyalgia, where uh, people very frequently say, I'm sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. And, um, and that, uh, that pretty much sums up their, their, their fatigue. On our next slide. So um, we, we look at our, our uh, treatment plan and uh, we, the, the first thing to do is to make sure that your primary condition is under control. So for instance, uh, you know, my nephew who has had uh, arthritis, uh, juvenile arthritis since he was in middle school, um, went through high school and he swam on the swim team and, and played, uh, played lacrosse and, uh, and he uh, uh, ran cross country, uh, swam, he, he, he sang in three different uh, choruses too. Very accomplished fellow, but you know, he had arthritis, but it didn't stop him. So as long as your primary condition is under control, you really don't necessarily have any limitations. Um, but if something happens and your medications stop working, then you have to readjust. Uh, you can uh, switch to a new medication or a different combination of medications. So sometimes we would uh, add, uh, add, add a conventional synthetic uh, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug to a biologic, for instance, um, or vice versa, add a biologic to a disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug, conventional synthetic. So, um, so that uh, we, we measure uh, disease activity in it, and it's important to have your disease activity under control getting a proper diagnosis for a, second, a secondary condition. So sometimes when we're evaluating somebody for rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, we detect that they have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is a, uh, an endocrine problem, it's a thyroid problem. And so we might co-manage that with an endocrinologist and make sure that that is adjusted as, as well as possible. So treatments that work for one chronic condition don't necessarily uh, work for another, but uh, oftentimes they are complementary. Um, so that's a good thing to remember as well. So next slide. So uh, other chronic conditions that uh, I, I, I mentioned, uh, I've already mentioned some of them, but it's a good idea to have good nutrition. And sometimes we use nutritionists. Um, sometimes there's a, there, there's a bariatric physician because if you lose 10 pounds, it's like taking 30 pounds off your knees. 
And if you improve your knee pain, then you can exercise more and it's, and you get dividends, both, uh, both in, in your ability to move around more, to exercise more, and then um, you, you get the fatigue going in the right direction. Sometimes this, the, the, the exercise needs to be supervised, meaning that um, a physical therapist could help you. And I oftentimes say that a physical therapist is a fishing instructor. And what I mean by that is if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. And if you teach a man to fish, he eats for the rest of his life. So um, the, the, uh, the physical therapist teaches you techniques that you can do to exercise, to make your muscles strong. For instance, around your knee, if you have knee pain, you uh, make your quadriceps muscles stronger. It supports your knee and it decreases your knee pain. Also, exercise decreases your fatigue. So medications for dizziness, sleep aids, and stimulants, I've already mentioned to you one thing, which would be modafinil or provigil. There's also new vigil or r modafinil if you have uh, a shift work disorder. So for instance, if, you know, when I used to, when I was in college, I worked at McLean trucking, opening, a uh, 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 loading and unloading trucks from 11 o'clock at night till seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then I had to go to class. And uh, so I had daytime sleepiness. I, I didn't, I didn't take any medicine back then, but somebody who, for instance, would be a nurse or something like that would have to function during the day afterwards might use a medication like modafinil for their shift work issues. Um, there uh, are also sleep aids. So if a person's not getting good restorative sleep, we might give them trazodone or doxepin um, to help with their sleep so they get good restorative sleep. Uh, sometimes if they have restless legs and we treat the restless legs, then um, they get better sleep as well. And uh, if they have dizziness, we can treat that um, with, uh, with uh, meclizine or antivert, one of those medicines that would help with dizziness though sometimes they also um, contribute to uh, sleepiness. There's cognitive behavioral therapy. We used to work uh, or we have worked in the past with a behavioral therapist to help patients reframe their thoughts and help them cope with their illness and give them coping skills. And, um, and that can help as well. And it's important um, to realize that activity is your friend. However, you have to balance exercise with rest. So um, every once in a while, I'll have a patient who say, says, you know, I went to an aerobics class and after an hour, they had to call an ambulance to come pick me up. And I said, well, well how, I mean, how long had you been going to the, the aerobics class? And they said, well, I hadn't, I hadn't worked out in years. And I said, well, why did you stay in the aerobics class for an hour? And they said, well, it's an hour long class. And I said, well, why didn't you leave after 10 minutes if you hadn't worked out in three years? So also uh, uh, make sure that you don't blame your activity. You, you, you you, you, uh, you use, uh, use your time wisely and, and be thoughtful about what you do. On our next slide. So secondary causes of, uh, of, of fatigue, medications, uh, corticosteroids may help you, uh, uh, may keep you awake at night, causing daytime uh, tiredness. My major professor in, in Connecticut when I was in my fellowship training, told a story of uh, she was talking to her daughter on the phone and her daughter said, um, mama, what, what are you doing? And she said, I'm stuffing grape leaves. And she said, do, do you know what time it is? And she said, no. And she said, it's three o'clock in the morning. And she was actually, she was actually taking steroids because she had had an allergic reaction to an antihistamine that you can't get anymore. It's called hismanol. So, um, so corticosteroids can, uh, can make sleeping difficult. Other medications can cause anemia. So um, some of our medicines that uh, we monitor, methotrexate, sulfasalazine, leflunamide, that's one of the things we monitor because you can have low blood count. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines are associated with gastrointestinal bleeding at times. There are 15,000, uh, sorry, 16,500 people a year um, who experience uh, gastrointestinal bleeding. So that's one of the things to be uh, aware of, that if you feel really fatigued, maybe you need to see the doctor and have your, have your blood checked. Of course, muscle relaxants, um, by relaxing you, oftentimes contribute to fatigue. On our next, uh, our next slide, Medications, uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, sedative hypnotics, they're, they're supposed to put you to sleep. That would be sleep medicines. Antidepressants, some of them give you more energy. So some people feel like, uh, for instance, Effexor or Venlafaxine or Pristique, Desvenlafaxine 
give you give you more energy. Uh, Prozac, when it first came out, it was going to be a wonder drug. And the reason why it was a wonder drug is because uh, most people had been on what we call tricyclic antidepressants, which caused them to gain weight and be tired all the time. So what they um, what they did is uh, when the when the Prozac came out, the serotonin selective uh, reuptake inhibitors, it was a godsend because people got more energy and stayed awake and were more productive. And so um, it can work either way. Opioids, as I've already mentioned to you, pain medicines, we call them narcotics, narcosis um, is related to sleep. It helps pain, but you know, I always tell my patients, general anesthesia will take care of all your pain. It's just hard to get things done during the day. Antihistamines, they can make you dry and they can make you sleepy. Um, they can help with dizziness and they certainly can help with allergies, but they might contribute to fatigue. And then antibiotics could be the antibiotic or could be the reason why you're on the antibiotics is why you have fatigue. Next slide. So depression. So they say that in fibromyalgia, only 25% of the people with fibromyalgia are clinically depressed, but the other people, as I mentioned, are sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. And that goes along with arthritis as well. The statistic is that one in four people with arthritis have some depression and living with a chronic condition is stressful. Um, it, it, the stress can change your brain, brain chemistry and there is uh, inflammation, uh, depression connection. You know, so in, uh, we know that in rheumatoid arthritis, TNF is elevated and it is certainly very important. Uh, it's, that's one of the things we target in, in rheumatoid arthritis. We call that a pro-inflammatory cytokine or a protein that promotes inflammation. So we want to block that. It's interesting that that is elevated in addition in fibromyalgia, which we see as a non-inflammatory condition. And it's even more elevated in depression. Uh, that was taught to me by Dr. Rye uh, or Ray over at uh, Emory. He's a psychiatrist at Emory who's in sleep medicine. So depression can cause fatigue, but it's possible that uh, both coexist. So it could be the chicken or the egg. Um, is it what did the depression come from your underlying illness or did the underlying illness uh, produce the uh, or, or, or did the did you did you get depressed because you had fibromyalgia? Or did you get fibromyalgia because you were depressed? We'll say it that way. On our next slide. Fatigue versus depression. So. Fatigue is uh, you, you lack stamina, you lack energy, and certainly you can have that um, with depression. People tend to, to classify fatigue globally, um, but oftentimes it is uh, it, it's it's not it's not that um, as in in uh, Faulkner's book as I lay dying uh, the the problem with the protagonist ants at the beginning of the book. Was it, wasn't that he couldn't get go, that he couldn't go, but um, the, the problem was getting him going. And once you got him going, it was hard to stop. So depression, sometimes it's just hard to get going, but once you get going, things go okay. Um, if you can get on top of your depression, fatigue is, is really the inability to complete the activity. So you, you get in the middle of an activity and you run out of steam. You don't have the stamina and you have to have to stop. So treating depression uh, can help reduce the uh, fatigue. As I mentioned, if you take one of the serotonin selective uh, reuptake inhibitors, it may uh, help your help your depression and help your fatigue. And sometimes um, if you're having trouble sleeping and you have a little bit of depression, then taking uh, one of the sedating uh, antidepressants at night can help you sleep and help with your fatigue. So um, physical activity is important, rest is important, healthy eating is important, and sleep is important, and, and perhaps cognitive behavioral therapy is, is important as well. On our next slide. So depression symptoms, uh, if it changes in appetite, so some people lose weight when they're depressed, some people uh, feed their depression. So you, you could gain weight as well. That you lose uh, interest in, in things that you normally find joy in. So hobbies, uh, you, sometimes uh, you, 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 if with depression, you could become a little bit uh, hard to deal with. Um, and so sometimes people, uh, you know, they're, they're irritable because they don't feel well, just like Euripides and Mouse, who took the uh, thorn out of the lion's paw and then they became friends. 
Um, if you if if you can get the, the the pain under control, then you're less irritable and usually less depressed. Uh, insomnia or sleeping too much can be a, a you know depression. So somebody who has a hard time uh, um, sleeping, they just can't get any sleep. Maybe because they're ruminating and worrying about things, or they sleep too much, they can't get out of bed. They they wake up, they you know they go to the bathroom, they go right back to bed, and they sleep for 14 hours a day. Anxiety, I've already mentioned, uh, you know, the rumination, uh, making it hard to sleep, uh, trouble concentrating, remembering things. So certainly oftentimes patients with fibromyalgia will say I have fibro fog. So um, cognitive issues are certain, certainly go along with fatigue, slow speech or movement, uh, a feeling of a worthlessness or guilt. Um, I think that's a you know, I, I think that's a, a problem that goes along with two X chromosomes. I think that, that women are really hard on themselves. Men, men, men aren't so hard on themselves. They're usually hard on each other, oftentimes uh, uh, hit and kick things and, and wind up with a broken foot or a broken hand. Um, women have a tendency to internalize it. Sometimes that causes depression. Sometimes it causes pain. Um, and uh, so feelings of hopelessness certainly are part of depression. Recurring thoughts of death or suicide are very important. And should you ever have that, you should seek help from a friend um, or a professional. And then interfering with daily functioning, you're just not getting done what you need to get done. On our next slide. So uh, hormonal imbalance, I've already mentioned, uh, as they say, that the, the change in life uh, for, for women, uh, low estrogen, it has many effects. Uh, I had a, a patient when, uh, um, when the COX-2 inhibitors were taken off the market, it also happened around the same time that Nanette Winger, my, my old uh, professor at Grady, said that women shouldn't take estrogen. And, and she said, I'm the most miserable person in the world. First, they took away my arthritis medicine, so I hurt. And then they took away my estrogen, and now I feel like I'm burning up. So um, that is pretty terrible. Anyway, excessive uh, progesterone during ovulation can also make you sleepy. Uh, too little thyroid uh, can zap your energy. Uh, too much thyroid is not good for you either, and it's not good for your bones. And then adrenal insufficiency, which sometimes is a consequence for having taken uh, steroids for a long period of time and then tapering off of them. Our next slide. So undiagnosed co comorbidities, um, having arthritis increases your risk for other health problems. So just like cholesterol and smoking are, uh, are a risk factor for heart disease, so is rheumatoid arthritis. So as we know, one of the markers, we, everybody wants to know, I, I, I'll be checking somebody for lupus and the first question they ask me is not, do I have lupus? They ask me, what was my cholesterol? So we've all been taught to ask that. And now we know, that the highly sensitive CRP is one of the markers that they use for an indicator of heart disease. Well, we use a not highly sensitive, we just use the regular CRP for an indicator of how, how, how much inflammation there is in your inflammatory uh, arthritis. So, um, so clearly there's crossover there. Diabetes um, uh, can go along with arthritis and, and unfortunately, um, even though steroid is our, our, is our Nobel Prize winning anti-arthritic medication, um, it can uh, lead to diabetes and if you've had it for a long time. And then uh, a comorbid condition, sometimes it can be um, occult, meaning that we, you don't even have uh, symptoms of it, so you didn't know it's there unless you get a colonoscopy and they find it on colonoscopy, but inflammatory bowel disease. So there's a percentage of people with ankylosing spondylitis who have undiagnosed or undiscovered inflammatory bowel disease. All of these can contribute to fatigue. Next slide, please. So uh, inactivity, the less you move, the less you move. We used to say at the hospital, the longer you stay, the longer you stay. And also the more exhausted you feel. So um, uh, it, 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 it's a two-edged sword. You, you, you need to move, you need to get exercise, 30 minutes a day of walking. And if you can't walk for 30 minutes, you can walk 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening or swimming, even better on your joints. Uh, riding a bike, if you, if you have back pain and you can't walk, I, I, that happens to me sometimes. And because I have a herniated disc, um, I can ride a bike because leaning over actually helps my back. Uh, but so if you don't move enough, 
then you feel exhausted. And if you move too much, you feel exhausted too. So life is a balance. Unused muscles. So um, your uh, muscles in your legs, if you don't use them, if you don't strengthen them, they become uh, weak. And then you're more, more prone to uh, hurt yourself. Also, it's harder to exercise if you don't do it on a regular basis. Your heart, as you know, uh, getting your heart rate up, that we always talk about your target heart rate when you're exercising. That's because you're exercising your heart as well. And, um, uh, and uh, uh, it can uh, weaken, uh, uh, weaken and tire you more uh, easily. So some people with uh, severe inflammatory arthritis have a, have a condition called cachexia. So um, TNF at one time was called cachexin. So the more, the more TNF you had, that, that, that's that protein that pr promotes inflammation, the more, um, uh, the more cachexia you, some people have. So some people with uh, 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 inflammatory arthritis uh, have, you know, decrease, they, they lose muscle mass and they have uh, uh, fatigue. All right, so, um, so, we're, uh, uh, so we're going to uh, go on to our next slide. So regular moderate activity, as I've mentioned, 30 minutes of walking or the equivalent reduces uh, disease-related fatigue and, and doing that five or six times a week uh, is good for your health. And types of uh, things I've already talked about, walking and swimming, but if you can't walk and you can't swim, you can do chair yoga, tai chi, the rom dance, things that work on strengthening and actually work on balance are very good too, because as we get older, our balance is not as good. Cycling can work really well. I don't cycle on the street anymore because I'm afraid of people in cars who have who have cell phones. Uh, but certainly, you can uh, you can uh, cycle on a uh, on an exercise a bicycle, uh, and uh, every every third patient it seems like has a Peloton and loves it. Um, and so it doesn't matter what age you are. I have an 83 year old patient who um, until recently was uh, riding centuries, which is hundred mile uh, races. She, uh, she did the, uh, the bicycle ride across Georgia, which they call the brag. She'd go over to Europe and ride her bicycle. So cycling is very good. I like the elliptical machine because I have knee problems from playing football and back problems. And unlike a treadmill um, or walking on, on a hard surface, it, 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 has, um, it doesn't have that pounding effect. Our next slide. So sleep disturbances, I've touched on that already. Um, they can be uh, secondary to your underlying condition or physiologic. So secondary uh, sleep uh, disorder, circadian rhythm, sleep apnea. You know, one of the things that can cause you to gain weight and have high blood pressure and be tired during the day is you stop breathing at night because you have sleep apnea. That can be uh, remedied with a CPAP machine if you can get them, now, a lot of them have been recalled. A lot of my patients are telling me that, but there are other things besides CPAP, mouth appliances and things like that. One of the things that they used to talk about, um, the sleep doctors would be uh, wear a tight uh, t-shirt and uh, have, uh, have somebody sew a, uh, actually I do the sewing in my family and my wife doesn't sew, but um, they, they would say, have your wife sew a tennis ball in the back of it so you don't sleep on your back because that's when you're more likely to have it. So sleep studies, also known as polysomnography, can help you make that diagnosis. On our next slide, sleep solutions. So um, massage, yoga, tai chi, acupressure, acupuncture helps some people. Our, uh, our office manager is uh, certified in in uh, yoga and she uh, has yoga, yoga um, classes a couple of times a week. Uh, sleep hygiene is very important as well. So uh, get prepared for sleep. It's not a good idea to exercise just before you go to sleep. Uh, better to exercise earlier in the day or have, uh, have a, a, a separate sleep and exercise so you don't, your metabolism is so hard that you have trouble uh, sleeping. Have a good sleep environment. So uh, make sure that it's dark and it's cool. Uh, bedtime restrictions, uh, as, as they say, only use it for uh, sex and sleep. Um, and uh, don't, don't use it to do work. Don't take your work to bed. Um, avoid alcohol and caffeine just before you go to bed because alcohol, though it might make you sleepier, you have less effective sleep. Caffeine, of course, can keep you awake. And then keep a sleep diary. So, um, it, it, you know, if you, uh, a pain diary, a sleep diary, a blood pressure diary, if there's something that's bothering you, keeping up with it is helpful because when you go to see your uh, your healthcare provider, 
uh, you can bring it up to them and you can work together to um, help help with your sleep. There are sleep aids. Uh, my wife uh, likes the uh, the dissolvable melatonin and a whole pill is too much for her. So she bites off a little piece. Um, there also are progression uh, prescription medications. I've touched on um, the uh, uh, trazodone, uh, doxepin are, are ones that can help as well. So there are strategies that you should uh, work for. Um, they're useful, but, um, you know, to the extent that you can do it without medications, that that's probably better because you can't have a side effect from a medicine you don't take. Activity is very important. So one of the, one of the important things is if you're, if you're active during the day, you're probably going to sleep better at night. So our next slide, other self-management, uh, that's Tai Chi that they're doing there. They're not telling you to stop. So mind body exercises uh, help reduce stress. Uh, meditation uh, helps. My uh, mindfulness is very important. Our, our, our office manager does uh, mindfulness. My, uh, my watch reminds me to have a mindful moment every day. And then social support. It's, uh, you know, during the pandemic, it's been easy to be isolated. Um, if you're isolated, then um, having social support over Zoom, like we're doing right now, having over FaceTime, um, making sure that uh, that you're interacting with uh, with people, even if it's uh, going to Sunday school on Zoom or going to church on Zoom, participating is important and having good social support. Next slide. So nutrition, B12 uh, gives you more energy. So you get that from fish and meat, poultry, eggs, dairy products. They're also protein is good. Um, and there are supplements for B12, uh, sublingual, sprayed in your nose, take an injection or swallow a pill. Vitamin D, fatty fish, um, oily fish is, uh, is good for arthritis. Uh, about four grams a day is usually what they say. Egg yolks, uh, though they have cholesterol. Fortified foods. So in the United States of America, we have a lot of fortified foods. Uh, supplements, uh, making sure that you have adequate protein. So if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, sometimes that's difficult, but it's important. Healthy carbs, um, so not, not so much desserts, um, but uh, complex carbohydrates help steady energy. Um, and, uh, you know, eating candy sometimes gives you a sugar crash. So that's, uh, that is not, uh, not, not really good. Smaller meals throughout the day. So small feedings and then hydration, it's very important. You know, they say you should drink eight, eight uh, glasses of water a day um, or maybe 32 ounces. That's not necessarily true, but certainly if you're out in the yard and you're, you're doing yard work, you want to make sure that you don't get dehydrated because that's bad as well. And along with fatigue, you can get some orthostasis, which means that it's hard. Uh, you know, you get dizzy when you when you stand up uh, and then using a, a dietitian. That's uh, that's somebody who's trained to help you find the best diet for you. Next slide. So at the doctor, um, talking with your doctor about their experience treating fatigue uh, or a, a referral to a doctor who does, that's important. And other doctors that can help with fatigue, sleep medicine, we've already mentioned that, doing a sleep study, endocrinologist, if you have thyroid issues, a neurologist, um, because you, you may have, um, uh, a condition, uh, an inflammatory condition uh, like multiple sclerosis. Uh, you could have a, a, um, a peripheral neuropathy, which could inter interfere with your sleep. Neurologists could help with that. Psychologists can help with uh, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, can help with depression, um, and can help uh, give you tools to combat, combat uh, uh, that. Allergists, um, if you uh, have uh, seasonal allergies or if you have environmental allergies can be, be very helpful. And if you have a chronic infectious uh, condition, um, then an infectious disease uh, specialist can help as well. Next slide. So these are resources and somebody else is going gonna, is gonna to take it from here. But I think maybe we might have an opportunity to, to talk together about fatigue. Absolutely. Thank you so much for all of that helpful information. Um, we're going to now take some time to answer some questions that came in. So if you have fatigue related questions, um, as a reminder, you can type them in, in the Q and a function at the bottom of your screen. And I know we have a few that are already here. So, um, if you have a few minutes, uh, Dr. Wilson, we'll just kind of go through these. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Um, so uh, we, it, this one came through, I was going to say the name, but it came through anonymous. <laughs> uh, 
Um, is fatigue typically a permanent symptom for most RA patients or does it fluctuate or often go away as your disease gets under control? Well, you know, um, yes, yes, and yes. So, uh, so the, 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 the correct answer is uh, the patients are like snowflakes. They're no two alike. And that certainly fatigue can go away. Um, and there's strategies to help with that. And I've had, I've had patients who, who have, um, gotten well adjusted on their medicine and said, I feel like a new person. I, I'm not fatigued at all anymore. Now, somebody who's had arthritis for a long period of time, um, and maybe has uh, some chronic deformities and some, uh, you know, which causes challenges through the day. So, you know, everything that they do is, is a little bit more challenging for them. Then, then fatigue may be something that they have to um, cope with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So fatigue is common. It doesn't always uh, go away, um, but, but hopefully um, it, with the right tools, it, it gets a lot better. And in many patients, it does go away. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, we have a few more questions. Um, what causes sudden fatigue? There will be days that I feel fine and then exhaustion will hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. You, you know, that's a, uh, that's a, I wish I knew uh, uh, answer there though. Um, there, there may be several possibilities uh, for that. Uh, for instance, um, I myself uh, sometimes have some trochanteric bursitis, so it, it hurts for me to lie on my side, and, um, and yet I'm a side sleeper. So sometimes I, I find myself going from one side to the other to the other and not getting a good night's rest. Now, that doesn't happen all the time, but I, you know, when it does, the next morning I wake up and, and for instance, um, I, you know, I have fatigue. Um, and so, um, it could be something that's episodic, um, but it's, it's hard to know exactly. Uh, and you probably, uh, you know, if, if it, if it, if it recurs on a regular basis and there's not an obvious answer to it, then that would be a good time to talk with your uh, rheumatologist and, and explore possibilities with him or her. <laughs> Great. So uh, we also want to know, Dr. Wilson, what are your thoughts on napping? Is it okay to nap when you're experiencing fatigue? And if so, how long and when should you be doing that? Yeah, yeah. Well, my, my wife actually brought 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 this up this uh, this morning and reminded me that uh, she learned from my father that um, that 30 minutes is, is a good amount of time and you don't actually have to nap. Just lie down and relax and let your muscles, um, you know, uh, get, uh, less fatigued. So, um, so the, uh, 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 so you don't actually have to nap, but, but the other thing is you don't want to go over an hour because if, if you are, and, and it's okay to sleep 30 minutes to 45 minutes, uh, would be, uh, you know, would be an okay time. If you go over an hour, then, Oftentimes what that'll do is it'll make it harder to sleep at night. And then if you get, um, if you get your, your night and your day cycle backwards, then, then, then you have more fatigue as well. Okay. Um, so also we had a question about um, the sleep meds you mentioned, cause you mentioned yeah. some specific um, sleep medication that might be able to help. Sure. Um, is there um, any thoughts on taking those types of sleep meds for a prolonged period of time? As arthritis patients, excuse me, uh, we sometimes hear, you know, you don't want to take that for too long when it comes to certain medications. So is there an issue with that with long-term sleep medication? Well, um, so it depends on the sleep medication. So in general, um, if it is something like trazodone, which is a, uh, an antidepressant, um, you know, people take that on a, on a regular basis to treat their, their depression, and there really isn't a rebound to it. Um, if it is something like a sedative hypnotic, a uh, Zolpidem or Ambien, uh, Linesta, one of those things, then there can be a rebound uh, uh, effect. And also, um, it, you know, if you use it on a, on a real regular basis, then it sort of loses its effectiveness. So sedative hypnotics or uh, like Ambien, are better to be taken on an intermittent basis than on a regular basis. Having said that, I had a patient one time whose son used to travel to Europe all the time. 
he, uh, uh, he had this great method of he would get on the plane, have a drink, have an ambient, wake up the next day and uh, and feel refreshed. And he went with a colleague one time and they were in the in the line for the passport line. And uh, and his colleague said, man, you were the bell of the ball last night. And he said, what, what do you mean? I was asleep. And he goes, no, you weren't. You were walking up and down the aisle, chatting with people and buying them drinks. He goes, no, I was asleep. He goes, no, no, you weren't. So um, <laughs> you have to be careful if you're taking a sedative hypnotic. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of stories of people going to the store and not not remembering it. So um, mm-hmm. usually usually it's better uh, if you it, it, rather than taking that on a regular term, regular basis, taking that intermittently and maybe trying something like uh, uh, doxepin or trazodone, both of which are, are, are sedating antidepressants, but also help you sleep. Okay, great. And if you do take the other ones, check your credit card statements to make sure oh, you right. know where you were the day before, right? right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay. So you mentioned melatonin as a, uh, potentially to help you be able to sleep. Are there any supplements or vitamins, um, to help with just always feeling tired, maybe to just throughout the day or in the morning to help perk you up? Sure. So, um, so things that um, oftentimes give people a little bit more energy are the B vitamins. So B12, uh, cyanocobalamin, uh, uh, the um, uh, folate is a B vitamin uh, that also gives some people energy. And then uh, curcumin is, a, is or, or turmeric is uh, one that can help with arthritis. Sometimes you can find those together. There's a there's a, a supplement called Roommate R H E U M A T E that has those three components in it. Sometimes that uh, um, that helps people, but you could also ask your pharmacist. They they could find that out. I find that people who are deficient in uh, vitamin D very frequently, uh, and we like to have the vitamin D somewhere in the you know the fifty or sixty range. Uh, normal is between thirty and hundred, so fifty or sixty seems to be a good a good amount. Um, the, the, uh, uh, you know, the, a lot of times people will say they get more energy when they do that. Um, so, uh, I think the vitamins are good. Certainly if you're on a diet, it's good to take vitamins. Um, but, uh, unfortunately there's not, there's not one in particular. You have to, you have to try, try them out and see what works for you. Okay. How can I tell the difference between fatigue due to age, um, and fatigue from the chronic inflammation and, and chronic pain? Well, um, that's a hard one to figure out too. So, uh, so you, you know, one would presume that if it's due to uh, inflammation, then there would be other signs of that. So, signs of inflammation are red, hot, painful, or swollen. So, if you have a red, hot, painful, swollen joint, then probably your arthritis isn't under good control, and maybe you need to see a rheumatologist and have that uh, that joint drained and injected, perhaps. Uh, or you need to have your muscles, uh, sorry, your, your medications uh, uh, adjusted. Um, if all your lab work is normal and, um, and you don't have any red, hot, painful, swollen joints and you're uh, chronologically gifted as I am, you have a little bit of uh, white hair, then it, it might be related to age. Though age, you know, age is just a number. So if it's related to age, then maybe you just need to exercise more because we know that people who are uh, uh, good, have good conditioning, are less likely to have fatigue, but also that's sort of that's sort of a self fulfilling prophecy. If you don't have a lot of fatigue and you exercise a lot, then you probably won't have a lot of fatigue because you exercise a lot anyway. You understand <laughs> the chicken or the egg, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> very good. So um, another question here: Is it fair to say that chronic osteoarthritis and pain significantly contribute to fatigue? I feel uh, feel like I've exhausted everything you mentioned: sleep meds, uh, neuro room, uh, endocrine, etc. There are no definitive answers except I'm fatigued. Yeah, that's a tough one. And, um, and certainly fatigue in and of itself can be a, a, a very daunting diagnosis to treat. Um, the serenity prayer is change things you can't accept things you can't know the difference between the two. And so if you have uh, osteoarthritis and it's, and it's pretty severe, um, then it, it's probably hard to probably hard to exercise. But as I mentioned earlier, I, um, uh, you know, pool exercise might be uh, very helpful. Um, and uh, I had a patient one time who had polymyositis. So his, his muscles were so inflamed, he couldn't walk, but he would ride his scooter up to uh, the pool 
uh, get on a, on a chairlift, they would put him down in the water and, and it was, you know, he would, he could, he could exercise all day long. And that really helped him a lot. So you might have to, if you, if osteoarthritis is a big problem, you might have to find a strategy that allows you to do something like that. And maybe that would be, maybe that would be helpful exercising in a pool or at, at, at Piedmont hospital, we have a pool that is, uh, um, 95 degrees. So, um, which is a little warm, but anyway, so exercising <laughs> in a, in a warm pool sometimes will help a lot too. You mentioned earlier, um, fatigue, um, excuse me, depression and anxiety being, uh, potential factors. Um, you know, arthritis worries are not alone in that anxiety and depression have su- significantly increased since March of 2020. Are you finding more patients dealing with fatigue now than you did before the beginning of the pandemic? Oh, absolutely. And, and the other thing, which is, striking um, is I would have to say in the, in the last week, I, I would say 50% of my patients have come in and said that they, they had COVID in the last 30 to, you know, 30 to 60 days. It, uh, apparently the, the holidays, it was rampant in a lot of, a lot of households. And certainly, you know, we also talked about, um, you know, one of the contributors to fatigue is, uh, is an infection. Clearly that's an infection. And there are some people who have a post COVID syndrome, which, uh, can contribute to fatigue. So, um, it, it is multifactorial, but certainly the things that we, you know, we mentioned earlier, social isolation, which of course that's, you know, that's what we, that's what we're doing. Cause it's a, it's a pandemic, um, that, that contributes to both depression and fatigue and anxiety. So no, I would hundred percent say that this is a, a very challenging time for most of my patients. Great. It's really important to find those solutions like the ones you, you gave us earlier. Um, speaking of COVID, um, someone uh, that's watching this evening says, I've had long COVID symptoms since having COVID in March of 2020. What is known about the crossover between RE fatigue and long COVID? Well, um, I don't think, you know, I, I don't think we know very much about COVID anyway. I think I think we're learning every day that uh, uh, that we're learning every day. So, um, but as, as, you know, as we go, uh, the, the long COVID, there are a couple of long COVID clinics around. One, uh, one of my patients went to the Emory Long COVID Clinic. Uh, there's one uh, down the street from us, Absolute Care. They're in infectious disease uh, experts. And of course, because it's an infectious disease, that may be the place where, you know, who, who, who wind up treating long COVID. But certainly if you have long COVID and you have rheumatoid arthritis, you might need both a rheumatologist and a long COVID clinic. The, interestingly, the long the, the person who uh, who came from the Emory Long COVID Clinic, I said, "What are they treating you with?" And she said, uh, "Fomotidine, which is a, 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 a the other name for that is Pepsid, um, it, you know, which is an antacid, and uh, Zyrtec or Sertrazine, which is a, is an antihistamine." I don't completely understand that, but um, she felt like it was helping her. Uh, it, you know, I again, we're back to the serenity prayer. To the extent that um, your uh, your inflammatory arthritis may be more activated because of the COVID, uh, it's best to work with your rheumatologist to get that under control, and then use some of the other perhaps supplements to see if you can help with the post COVID syndrome. Wonderful. Is caf- uh, coffee and caffeine are they okay for energy boosting? And what about energy drinks? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I, I don't know very much about energy drinks. I have a 24 year old who, who likes energy drinks a, a lot. Um, I see all sorts of crazy things on the internet where, you know, a guy's heart is pumping outside of his chest because he ate a, a he, he had too many energy drinks. So I, I think everything in moderation is probably okay. My brother-in-law, when he's driving and he gets sleepy, he uses one of those little five hour energies. I've never tried that. I don't do energy drinks. I do. I do like, I do like coffee. Um, you know, uh, coffee, y- y- you know, uh, it-, it can give people some energy. Um, I think, again, anything in, in, in moderation. Uh, so I-, I don't think that they're necessarily bad, but I-, I wouldn't do it excessively. And that's hard to to do that in moderation if you're experiencing chronic fatigue, because you're like, well, I just need a little coffee today, but then tomorrow you might need a little coffee tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's true. And, and, I, and you know, I, I think a little coffee is fine. If you're drinking coffee all through the day and at night and you have trouble sleeping, then maybe you need to cut back on your coffee. <laughs> yes. Um, another question here, besides using a CPAP pap machine, are there tips for people with sleep apnea to get a better night's sleep? Well, there are. Um, one of them is to, uh, to sew a, a tennis ball on the back of a t-shirt so you don't lie on your back. 
Um, that's a pretty simple one. But there are mouth appliances uh, that you can use. Um, and it's not really, that's not really my bailiwick. There are, uh, you know, uh, surgeries uh, that you can do. Um, but best to uh, cover that with a, a sleep specialist. And, and we have, you know, there's several around. So great. Um, I didn't write this question, but I may as well have because I had the same question for you. Tips for brain fog and concentration um, as difficulties due to RA fatigue. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a silly thing to say, but uh, some people say that your your brain is a muscle and you have to exercise it. So <laughs> one of one of the one of the things that I would say that is important is to um, uh, to be plugged in and active because uh, you know, again, uh, like the the longer you stay, the longer you stay the more inactive you are, the more inactive you are. And if you're not, if you're not, you know, cognitively challenging your brain, um, then part of the, part of the issue there is you're not, uh, you, 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 your brain is getting less used to being active. So I, I personally, um, I do, I do, uh, puzzles. I, I there's, there's one that I, I like to do called wordscapes. Um, uh, and, uh, just my, I had a nephew was doing it. And I, so I started doing it, but I, I think it's good to, uh, to do that. Um, uh, memorization is good. I like to, I like to memorize poems and, and uh, uh, things like that. Um, and so, uh, anything that you can do that challenges your brain, I think helps. And then, uh, anything you can do that helps with your fatigue. So, I mean, if you're not sleeping well, sleep better and all the other things that we've, we've mentioned, but in addition to the things that I've, I've mentioned without mentioning them all again, mm -hmm. ex exercising your brain, I think is a good idea. All right. Very good. Uh, tips for constantly waking up at night due to pain or frequent bathroom breaks. This person doesn't drink much liquid before bed, but is still experiencing that problem. Uh, urologist. Um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, men, certainly uh, they take medicine for prostate, which can help them. Uh, women don't have a prostate, but sometimes they have an overactive bladder mm -hmm. and there are different medicines that can help with uh, overactive bladder. There are, uh, you know, I have a lot, it's not uncommon for me to have a patient who has a woman who has interstitial cystitis, which is basically just an angry bladder. And, um, and the, again, urologists help with that. There are things that, that, that make your bladder more angry and, and caffeine may be one of them that uh, will make uh, people's uh, bladder more angry. So, you know, you're tired, you want to drink a cup of coffee, but then, you know, then your bladder gets angry and you have to go to the bathroom a hundred times. Uh, so that's not yeah. good. Yeah. Um, is it better to push yourself to exercise even when you're feeling fatigued? Um, alternatively, are low impact exercises best for fatigue? If someone is able to do high intensity exercise, is that okay to do with arthritis? Yeah, that's a complex question. So what I tell my <laughs> patients, I'll just tell you what I tell my patients, which is on a good day, you do more. And on a bad day, you do less um, mm -hmm. because you, you really pushing through the, the, the fatigue, pushing through the pain is not necessarily good. You know, when I was younger and played football, they said no pain, no gain. Um, I have a lot of injuries uh, related to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's not necessarily good. So listen to your body. And that's why I say exercise by distance. So on a good day, you'll walk further and come back on a bad day. Um, you won't work at walk as far, but you should always, always exercise because if I, you know, if I told my patients, if you hurt, don't move. Some of my patients had never moved because they hurt all the time. So right. moving is good, but using your, 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 your head and doing it um, in a thoughtful and mindful manner is the best way to do it. Listen to your body. Yeah. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, what is the connection, if any, with vitamin D supplement supplementation and severe stomach pain? Um, this person has systemic lupus. Well, I don't, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, there is, so um, when I was first in practice, I had a, uh, a, an employee who was big into vitamins, uh, Shackley vitamins or something anyway, and she gave me a bunch of vitamins and, and it upset my stomach. And I, I you know, I don't know that, it, I, you know, I guess I'm a lemming. I just took whatever she gave me. Um, and so I stopped <laughs> taking vitamins Now I use gummies because it's sort of like a little treat for me. Um, but um, if, if the supplement that you're taking upsets your stomach, then I try a different supplement is what I would, what I would say. Um, and uh and, you know, uh, the, the most classic advice is it, it hurts when I do this. Don't don't do that. Don't do Find it. something else to do. Yeah. And there okay. and there are different delivery methods uh, too. you know, so 
and you know they're sublingual they're they're you know dissolvable whatever liquid so okay any correlation between ra and sleep abnormalities such as sleepwalking um actually sleepwalking specifically no but certainly uh trouble sleeping uh because of of uh of pain or because of some of the medicines you know for instance back back to the uh, steroids but it is um uh it's a uh, uh uh you know there's not any direct correlation i know with uh, somnambulism or uh, sleepwalking i do have a daughter who does that but she didn't have ra mm. Um, so we had this question in relation to osteoarthritis earlier, but similar to that question, how do I tell the difference between fatigue from RA inflammation and effects from DMARD medication? Well, so, and again, that's a challenging one too. Mm -hmm. So when, when, and, and, you know, your body's your body. Um, so my idea, I always ask my patients, you know, what do they think? Um, because they're the ones taking the medicine. So if, if there's a correlation that, you know, I, I take the medicine, for instance, methotrexate, I take methotrexate on Friday and on Saturday, I'm just wiped out. Sunday, I still don't feel good. Monday, I start feeling better. Well, maybe um, after you take your methotrexate, you need to take leucovorin the next day, which helps, you know, mitigate those problems. Mm -hmm. If you're taking folic acid and you're only taking one milligram a day, maybe you need to take two or three, or my wife even uses five milligrams a day of, of, of folic acid. So maybe adjusting some of the uh, supplements that you take with your medicine would help, or, you know, maybe you, you need to change medicines and try something else. Um, because, uh, you, you know, we do want to control the arthritis, but we want people to have good and productive lives. And the, um, uh, in particular, uh, you know, if it's a side effect from a medicine, treat the side effect if you can, or change the medicine. If the medicine's not effective, then find an effective medicine. All right. Um, thoughts about dealing with feelings of guilt when resting to combat fatigue? Um, my wife was actually talking about that earlier today, um, is, uh, is that, uh, she being, being a woman, um, and I, you know, I, like I said, guys, guys are, uh, are shallow, um, and thankful for it. Um, but women are thoughtful and, uh, and so they take a lot on themselves. Um, she encourages her, her, uh, her patients to do self-talk and to say, you know, I have a, I have a chronic, uh, illness. I'm dealing with it. And sometimes I can do more and sometimes I can't. I know a lot of the people out in, in, uh, in the internet land have heard of the spoon theory um, mm -hmm. that, you know, you have only so many spoons and you got to, you got to plan your day. And I oftentimes tell my patients that and recruit the family, you know, kids, kids can bring their, you know, their laundry to the, to the, to the uh, washer and dryer. And, and, you know, kids can take their laundry from the washer and dryer and, and fold it themselves. And, you know, sometimes it's a good, uh, a good learning uh, thing for a child to learn how to, how to take their take care of themselves early in life. They, they can do that. So recruiting the family, um, uh, you know, planning your day, uh, you, you know, if, if you, if you don't, if you got bad knees and, and you're going to come down and go up and you want to only want to come down the steps once a day and go up once, once a day, then, you know, plan what you're going to, you know, take down what you're going to take down. So you don't have to go back up and down the stairs, that sort of thing. That makes so much sense. As a, I mean, as a patient and a, a mom and a wife myself, I, I feel that guilt all the time, but yeah. there are, you know, there are just some days that I, I need the rest more. And I'll say to my husband, I still need to cook. I need to clean. I need to do this. I have to do our laundry. And he says, yeah, but you need to go lay down for a little bit first, you know? So sure. it's it, like you said, involving the family. Um, if you, if you have family that you live with is, is really helpful. Um, so another question, we have a couple more that have come in. Um, I wake up feeling more tired than when I went to sleep. What can I do? Um, figure out a way to get more restorative uh, sleep. So if you, if Anna, people say, there, there's several things that people say. I, I wake up, I felt like I was hit by a Mack truck. It's interesting. They never say a Peterbilt or a, fr a Freightliner. They always say Mack <laughs> truck. Um, or, they, or they say, uh, you know, last night, my, my dreams were so vivid. I didn't know whether I was awake or asleep. So that's not good restorative sleep if they, if they remember that. Or like you said, I wake up and I'm more tired when I wake up than when I went to bed. Um, mm -hmm. in, that, in those instances, uh, a sleep medicine doctor might be very helpful. Adjusting the medicine might be helpful. Looking, you know, at, you know going, through the, going through the list of things. Well, 
what time do you go to bed? Um, how soon, how soon after you, you know, you go to bed, do you fall asleep? Cause some people say, you know, I lie in bed for two or three hours before I fall asleep. Well, if you lie in bed for two or three hours before you fall asleep, you probably need something to help initiate sleep or, um, and the, so the two questions I have is, do you have trouble falling asleep or do you have trouble waking up? And if they say, well, yeah, I, I go to the bathroom five times a night. Well, then maybe you need to see the urologist. So mm-hmm. there, it, you know, it's, it's different for different people, but you know, you need to dissect the question, find out what the problem is and try and take care of that, that particular problem. But certainly if you go to bed and you wake up the next day and you're more tired when you wake up than when you went to bed, you gotta, you gotta find something to make that better. All right. Um, energy tips for mid afternoon slumps, snacks, stretches. What do you recommend? (laughs) Well, so, so maybe all the above. Um, I usually recommend that my patients, certainly if they get stiff easily that they, sometimes they set, uh, set a timer on their watch for, you know, 55 minutes and every hour they get up and they, and they stretch, walk around for five minutes. Um, so they don't, you know, People, people get very intense. You know, they're on calls like this all day long. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, you know, after five hours of, of, of sitting on the, you know, on the computer, they go to get up and they're, they're like the tin man, they need oil. And uh, um, so it's better to take breaks and, uh, um, and to stretch. I think stretching's good. I think walking outside and, and, and looking at the sun, if it's not raining, um, would be, uh, uh, would be a good idea. Um, so, and, uh, and doing, and, and, and the other thing is, you know, work with a purpose. So one of the things you do is uh, you say, I'm going to get this done and then I'm going to do something I want to do or uh, something I like to do. So taking breaks and doing things that you enjoy doing. So, uh, you know, taking breaks, getting some exercise, drinking water, make sure you, you don't get uh, dehydrated. Um, and then, you know, throwing something in there that you, you enjoy doing and do that and then, then go back to work if you need to. Great. We have one last question for you here, um, Dr. Wilson. Is it unusual for my eyes to tire before I physically feel tired? And if so, what can I do? This person exercises six days a week. Yeah, yeah. Well, and again, I don't know exactly what they mean, but I'll just toss out some stuff here. So um, when when we're uh, looking at a screen, we don't blink as much as if we're talking to somebody mm-hmm. and we don't, if, you know, if we're just sitting somewhere, we blink more. So the, the one of the issues that people run into is if they're reading their Kindle or reading their iPad or whatever they're reading is they don't blink enough and then their eyes get dry. Also, 20 to 25 percent of people with any autoimmune illness um, have dry eyes, um, uh, and and people with Sjogren's syndrome, all of them have dry eyes. So um, so dry eyes may be part of it. The other thing is uh, there may be some weakness in their eye. They might have str- some strabismus. So seeing their eye doctor might not be a bad idea. So mm-hmm. there there are tests for dry eyes. There's a Shermer's test. There's a, a Rose Bingle staining test. There's a tear breakup time test. Um, so there are a lot of things that can be done to check out for dry eyes. Certainly, an ophthalmologist can help out. Um, and tired eyes as well. And it could be you, you need to get your eyes checked and maybe change your, uh, your, your, your glasses. Yeah, I can definitely speak to that one as well. I've had dry eyes for years. I always thought it was just allergies because I have allergies. No, nope, it was related to RA when I finally went to go see the eye doctor about it. So yeah, 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 yeah very good. Well, Dr. Wilson, thank you again for lending your time and expertise tonight. I believe I can speak on behalf of our audience that we've all gained a different perspective on arthritis related fatigue and how to solve it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Very good. So before we sign off for tonight, just a reminder that we have several resources and events coming up to help you manage your arthritis. We have a young adult webinar, Real Talk About JA and Emotional Health. That is going to be on February 9th. Touch Therapies for Pain Management on February 23rd. Chinese nutritional nutritional therapies to reduce inflammation on March 3rd. There's also a VIM emotional health challenge kickoff event on March 16th. I actually heard a little bit about this one the other day, and I'm really excited about it. And for those of you who have not downloaded the VIM app, make sure you do so you can find it in your app store and Google play store. Just search VIM arthritis, V I M arthritis, and you can find it. Um, Also, these webinars I mentioned, um, most of them are already up on the website. Um, You can register on arthritis.org slash webinars. And again, if there's, if you're looking for one and it's not on the website yet, just keep checking back though. I'll be on the website soon. Um, As I mentioned before, uh, just taking 10 minutes to fill out the insights assessment can develop 
programs that speak to what's important to you, like what we talked about this evening. So again, visit arthritis.org slash insights to take the insights assessment. And even if you've taken it before, if it's been a while, go ahead and take it again. Um, as a closing reminder, please note that in a few days, you should receive a survey asking about your experience during this webinar. Um, please take the time to fill that survey out completely and honestly, so the foundation can best serve you in the future. Thank you all again so much for joining us tonight. Take care. Thank you.